Is it good now? Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, good evening, everyone over there. And it's actually early morning for me uh, here in Seattle. So, I'm joining you from uh, Seattle, Washington, in the uh, United States. Uh, so, time is around uh, 5 5:50 here in the morning on 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 a Monday morning. So. Uh, um, uh, my name is Gresham Fernando, and uh, so today I, I'm going to talk about the uh, uh, the third industrial revolution and uh, and digital manufacturing, and then some implications of these technologies to project management. Um, so before we talk, uh, be begin the talk. Uh, this is uh, basically a very high level uh, introduction about me and uh, like in my education. And, uh, and experiences. So uh, I attended uh, Vikramashila Central College in Girihulla and uh, then joined the uh, University of Peradeniya uh, Faculty of Engineering. And uh, I was there till 95 doing my undergraduates. And then uh, from 95 to 97, I worked there as a lecturer. And then in 97, I uh, came to uh, USA for my uh, graduate studies uh, at Ohio University and then after completing my uh, PhD at Ohio University I uh, uh, worked as a, an, as a professor in uh, West Virginia University uh, Institute of Technology and then uh, you know after that uh, I joined a Boeing company uh, uh, and now I'm, I'm working for Boeing company uh, 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 for the last uh, eight years. So uh, at Boeing Company, uh, I mainly uh, work on, uh, <coughs> sorry, I mainly work on uh, uh, product life cycle management, uh, computer design, computer manufacturing, and, uh, and also uh, digital, uh, digital manufacturing technologies. So, uh, for my uh, talk uh, today that in, uh, involves um, digital manufacturing, uh, which is gained from my educational experiences as well as the, the experience at Boeing, uh, Boeing Company. So, um, so having said that, uh, I'm going to uh, start uh, the talk with uh, highlighting some uh, uh, major technical drivers that usually trigger any industrial revolution. Uh, so when you look at the history of industrial revolutions, uh, there are three major technologies that trigger them. Those are the, the energy, technology related to energy, and then the technology related to transportation, and then uh, technology related to uh, communication. So now these are the three major technical drivers uh, that has uh, happened, uh, that, that has triggered industrial revolutions in the past. So if you look at the first industrial revolution, uh, you can see that the coal was the energy uh, source and energy technology that they used uh, uh, in, uh, during the first industrial revolution. And then for transportation, uh, they invented the steam powered uh, uh, locomotives. And then uh, as the communication medium, they had the steam powered uh, printing press. And then when you uh, when you think uh, when you look at the second industrial revolution, that energy technology tra you know uh, was transferred to oil oil based technologies. Uh, um, that mean uh, uh, the fossil fuel, and then uh, the the transportation uh, mechanism became the the technology based on internal combustion uh, engines, and then the communication. Uh, uh, media was uh, mainly the telephone technology. So uh, around those same forces, today there is a third industrial revolution uh, that is taking place slowly, um, and uh, it's already there. In fact, uh, now again uh, we can see those three forces uh, like the energy, uh, transportation, and then uh, communication uh, technologies are the center of this uh, third industrial revolution as well. But then uh, again, the, the technologies have changed. So in terms of uh, uh, the oil, we are 
slowly transferring into a green energy uh, technology. And then uh, when you think about the transportation, uh, there are, you know, electric automobiles are emerging uh, everywhere in the world. And then when you think about the, uh, the communication mechanism, internet has already taken over uh, almost, uh, uh, you know, more than 50% uh, of uh, communication today in the world. So, uh, so we still have the same, uh, you know, technical, uh, um, you know, three major technical forces that triggers this industrial revolution. But the technologies have changed to, uh, you know, uh, more more advanced and uh, in a way more more greener, um, uh, greener in the sense uh, like, uh, you know, when you think about the, the 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 energy sources in the past, like oil had many. You know, has many. We are facing. Hello. Hello. Yes. Right. I good. Okay. Um. Okay. So now, in addition to these three. Uh, now, uh, also, when you look at these three uh, techni uh, technologies, now when you produce any uh, uh, okay. hello, I'm, I'm hearing some noise. Okay, uh, so can you hear me well? Yeah, I it. Okay, good. Uh, so. For producing any uh, consumer product or service today, we mainly use these three technologies, and it, and that is that was the case in the past as well. So for producing any product or service, you know these three technologies will be in the center when you product produce uh, any product or service uh, for the consumers. Now, uh, what is more important, uh, what is more uh, advanced today is uh, in in addition to these three technologies. There is another uh, a new technology, or it, it's, uh, I shouldn't say new technology. There is an emerging uh, internet called uh, Internet of Things, where all these technologies that that you see here are connected together today. Uh, we are being connected in for the future. So, uh, so you might have heard about Internet of Things or IoT. Um, so basically, IoT means uh, uh, linking uh, physical objects to uh, wired wireless networks that uses the same internet uh, protocol. That means just like uh, we are transferring, uh, I mean we are transferring uh, digital data through the internet. Um, we uh, the the objects in the future, uh, physical objects like uh, refrigerators or automobiles or any uh, energy generation device um, can. Uh, uh, transfer data through the the same uh, internet that we that we that I used to talk to you today. So so that's like a you know game changing technology for the future actually, and and it's going to have many uh, implications uh, for the for the future um, you know technologies and future uh, project managers and uh, and also for the com consumers. So it's a uh, so it's it's a new you know emerging. Uh, Platform called Internet of Things that uh, that everyone in the future, in the near future, have to deal with, and uh, so that's uh, and that you know enables many things and also bring bring us many challenges uh, for the future as well. Um, so so that's you know a high level overview of uh, the third industrial revolution and also the uh, Internet of Things uh, that comes along with it. All right, now, uh, you know, having talked about the IoT and the third industrial revolution, I'm going to briefly talk about uh, digital modeling and digital fabrication. Okay. Now, digital modeling and digital fabrication is also a part of uh, this third industrial revolution. As, I, as you see here in this chart, I have mentioned digital manufactured products and services. So, so what is happening with the third industrial revolution is, uh, Instead of uh, making these consumer products uh, using conventional techniques that we used to have in the past, 
we are transferring into uh, digital technologies in producing these, uh, these goods and services that you see here. Um, so digital manufacturing is one, uh, uh, you know, one uh, technology where, um, where we, we use, uh, you know, computers or computer models to uh, generate the physical objects. As you see here, the dig digital fabrication is a type of manufacturing process where a machine used to uh, fabricate the part is controlled by a computer. Um, and then the geometry of the, the object uh, that, that we are you know, manufacturing is, is defined by a digital model. That means we first design it in the computer and then we use a digital uh, manufacturing tool. Uh, uh, and this tool could be, you know, uh, like a 3D printer that uh, you might have already seen over there. Or this could be like a computer numerical control machine. Um, and, uh, and also there are, you know, other uh, uh, you know, digital uh, uh, tools that, that are used for, you know, manufacturing that are, you know, emerging to make a digital model, uh, to make a physical model out of a digital model. So, uh, so, you know, this digital manufacturing uh, is also, you know, helping to trigger more innovation uh, around the world. And, uh, and it, you know, it, it is going to bring uh, uh, more uh, opportunities for everybody around the world uh, towards prosperity. I mean, they, you know, today it is very hard to manufacture anything, uh, you know, locally, anything, especially in like uh, countries like uh, even in Sri Lanka and also uh, when you think about a country like uh, uh, any country in Africa, uh, for them it is very hard to, you know, manufacture, uh, you know, especially uh, these um, advanced products. And uh, with these digital manufacturing technologies, they also get the opportunity to, you know, uh, manufacture any, uh, any product that they, they may want to uh, imagine in the future. So that, uh, so that's one, uh, you know, major shift uh, because in the past we had to have very big uh, factories to, uh, you know, manufacture uh, uh, products like uh, if you think about a, uh, uh, like an automobile or even a bicycle, you need to have a big factory to, uh, with big, big, big machines, a big factory with big machines uh, should, should, you know, were required in the past to manufacture uh, some sophisticated products, uh, not even sophisticated product, even a bicycle, as I said. So with this digital technology, you, know, you get the um, ability, uh, I mean, any consumer may get the ability to, uh, you know, manufacture their own uh, products if they can, you know, imagine about a product uh, in the future. Um, and also it will, uh, the digital manufacturing will improve uh, the product accuracy and it will eliminate most of the mistakes that are, you know, that are, that are happening with the conventional techniques today and also this is again related to something i mentioned this this will enable the customized products uh, with a greater uh, flexibility and that means we can uh, move towards some personal fabrication in the future also it will accelerate time to produce any, anything from uh, from uh, concept to the, the concept to the, the final product uh, of course, it is going to reduce product cost because of the fast pace of uh, product development and also use of uh, less energy on these, uh, you know, using these technologies. And also, it, uh, it will uh, greatly improve uh, the, the, the collaboration and, and product development uh, globally. Because, uh, you know, you can uh, communicate this uh, through the internet and uh, the products can be sent through the, uh, the product designs can be sent to the internet. So we can improve the the uh, the the collaboration uh, of product design globally, and that's again uh, in terms of project management is again a great uh, uh, challenge, a uh, great opportunity, and also a challenge actually uh, for the future. And uh, and also this uh, the, the digital technology uh, may help to save the planet and in, even uh, save your life in the future. So when I say save your life, you know. Uh, digital technologies has been used to manufacture, um, you know, our own human organs as well, uh, using 3D printing technologies. So there are, um, you know, companies who are working on those areas, 
where they are, you know, they have shown already some success in terms of making uh, uh, human liver um, and and uh, you know other organs as well. So that's again a, a game. So basically, it's a game-changing technology that is, uh, uh, you know, that is. Uh, I shouldn't say emerging, but that has already happened, but then it's basically improving at a faster pace. Um, so, and uh, so these are some uh, very uh, you know, appealing and interesting applications uh, of these digital technologies. So, so one of the digital uh, manufacturing technologies that is what we call 3D printing. And as is, you, know, you may have already seen uh, one of the small 3D printer over there. So now the, these, uh, these objects that you see here on the screen, all these have been manufactured using, uh, 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 using 3D printing. Um, so this is actually a drivable car. Uh, uh, and, and this is a very like exotic looking uh, uh, you know, violin and, uh, and very, um, you know, very uh, uh, exotic looking lampshades. And this is, yes, this is a house, a very big structure as well, can be manufactured using the 3D printing technology. And then, of course, very, um, you know, uh, designer clothes. Uh, this entire, you know, garment has been manufactured using 3D printing. And, and also, you know, products like, you know, smoke bicycles. And, and uh, you know, the, the possibilities are, of course, endless. Especially the advantage of 3D printing is the, the complexity of the geometry is not a, not a problem. Uh, so if you can design it, then you can manufacture it. But, you know, uh, whereas in the conventional technologies, you can design anything, but you cannot manufacture those things. Like, it is very hard to manufacture uh, something like this, and even even this. So, so that's that's where the advantage is. The, the you can come up with any design, and, and geometry of that design is not a challenge for the three D printing. It, you know, they can the three D printer can easily uh, manufacture that. Uh, that uh, that three D shape, uh, um, you know, very easily. Of course, there are size limitations. For example, the three D printer over there cannot manufacture this bicycle because this is bigger than its build volume. Uh, so also, it cannot produce the, this car, of course. But the you know, actually, when you think about this car, the the entire body of this car has been three D printed as a one single uh, body. So it's a one one shot print actually for the entire body, not the wheels, but the the uh, entire car body. Uh, so, uh, same same with this bicycle frame. It's a, it's a single uh, single uh, print or, uh, using a three D print. And same with the with the with the building that they are constructing here. You know, three D printing technologies. So, so you have to have varying build volumes. Like if, you know, if you want to make a car, you need to have a bit bigger uh, you know three D printing three uh, D printer of course. Um, all right, so let's let's move forward. And uh, now I'm getting back to this uh, uh, Internet of Things uh, topic that we discussed earlier. Um, so Internet of Things uh, basically, you know, enables us uh, uh, to have uh, something called localized digital fabrication. Uh, so digital fabrication includes three D printing, of course. So uh, so when I say localized digital fabrication, that means uh, you know a, anybody in uh, you know even in a remote village you know, somewhere in the world uh, they can uh, produce uh, uh, something that I design here. You know I can design uh, something very complicated, and I can send the design. Uh, you know I can transfer the, the data through the internet, and if they have a, uh, like a, something like a three D printer or some digital digital manufacturing tool in somewhere in a very remote village in Sri Lanka or in any other country. So they can produce it there locally. I don't have to send the finished product. It doesn't matter how complicated it is, I can transfer the design through the internet. So, so that enables us localized digital fabrication. Uh, and even uh, with the Internet of Things, I can even control a digital tool uh, that is uh, somewhere else, like uh, it, the, the 3D printer that you have in front of you in the class, yeah, uh, if it is connected to the IoT, then I can control it from here. Even. So, so it's it's uh, it's very uh, you know capable technology uh, uh, in, in the future. Uh, and then uh, 
also it will enable uh, something called localized green energy production and uh, distribution of uh, that energy globally so there are there, you know there are a lot of uh, undertakings going on in that area as well like where uh, you can produce something like uh, solar energy in sri lanka and then you can uh, sell that energy through the internet uh, um, so that iot technologies will enable that us uh, will enable it uh, in the future and uh, also now this is very important for the project management side uh, the, the iot will um, make us a uh, lot of big data available to us um, and big data and a lot of uh, data analytic tools available to everyone and that's really important for project management because project management is all about data so you need more more and more data to manage any project uh, 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 you know successfully so because that way you know when you have more data you can make better decisions uh, up front uh, before you execute any project so that is uh, really important uh, uh, with the iot you you are going to get any uh, you know any data you may want and also you can you will have a lot of data analytic tools uh, freely available to you like uh, google already provide a lot of uh, you know uh, tensorflow uh, for example that uh, is free to everyone so it, that can be used to analyze any data and get the um, you know the uh, analyze the data and uh, and then get the uh, information you need to make any decision for any, any project uh, that you want to make. Um, also, it will bring uh, new and effective educational mechanisms. In fact, uh, you know this. You know, I'm talking to you from uh, you know very far, but that has enabled uh, you know this, this. That is because of the internet and Internet of Things. Well, you know, I may be able to someday uh, operate that uh, 3D printing from here and you know do a class to you. Uh, you know, with, with product design uh, example, for example. So, so it's 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 again very uh, going to be very. Uh, uh, effective uh, education uh, from from uh, you know around the world, uh, and basically it will break some uh, you know physical uh, uh, limitations that we that we face in the past, and also you know physical limitations that we face today. And then uh, this is something again new: the creation of digital twins. Now this is again a, a new uh, project that actually Boeing Company. I started to work on uh, at the beginning of this year, so it's brand new. And uh, when uh, uh, GE, uh, GE company has already used uh, this uh, this digital twin uh, concept. Now this means actually for any uh, larger product like an airplane, um, uh, while we make the the uh, the physical product, which is physical airplane, uh, we also build a uh, Digital twin of that physical model. When I say digital twin, that means it will have all the physical data digitally stored, not just the the geometry, but all the functionalities of it. That means we can simulate the entire airplane um, uh, along with the physical. Like uh, if it is flying, then we can do the the flying and then simulate all the systems within the airplane. Um, and that that digital twin will be available for any airplane that they deliver to any airline class customer. So. So when an airline calls and uh, you know calls with a problem, then we can diagnose it using the digital twin in the future. So it's a it's a big project actually that uh, that Boeing company undertook this year, um, and it's going to be very uh, you know exciting for the future. So because a lot of companies will uh, are going to have uh, you know build these digital twins in the future, so that they can uh, simulate the that uh, digital model, just like the just like the, the physical model, will work. You know, to, to simulate everything and then basically solve any problems with the physical model. Um, so actually, what, what happens is the digital twin will always receive data from the physical model. So it's it's a you know like one to one link uh, that again that is done through the Internet of Things. Uh, so it, 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 it's a very uh, uh, very exciting uh, you know capability. Uh, that is, that will be provided by the uh, IoT. And also, um, I don't know, uh, you might have heard about uh, systems engineering at a high level. And then uh, this, with the IoT, the systems engineering technique that we have today, I'm not going to talk, talk about detail uh, of systems engineering, but that uh, systems engineering will be able to uh, 
uh, we manage on any product, uh, any any uh, project uh, with a more holistic view. That means, uh, since we have more data available, um, the, the system engineering techniques can be applied uh, uh, for the entire of project right from the beginning, uh, even before you you know you do anything uh, you know um, on on like if, if it is a product development. So before you do any physical work on the product, you know everything could be, uh, you know, modeled and and designed and then simulated, and uh, you know any problems could be you know handled, uh, um, you know before we, before we even think about manufacturing. So so we can um, basically, uh, uh, you know, declare the success of a project even before we uh, you know launch it. Even the market analysis can be you know implemented there and then kind of simulated, uh, so we can get a better uh, idea with that that kind of approach. So actually, systems engineering and this this digital twins all will go hand in hand together along with the Internet of Things because uh, because we can uh, get all the data that we need for any uh, any project uh, and then kind of simulate everything and and then uh, you know. You know there will be a lot of use cases to analyze, of course. So all those can be analyzed uh, with the with that systems engineering uh, uh, models that we we can build in the future. Vishen, can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Yeah. So after three minutes more, the, this will be disconnected because we had uh -huh. two people connected. So it's okay. Now uh -huh. uh, I'll come back. Uh, I'll reconnect you back with the new session. Yeah. So you can continue till it finishes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's fine. So um, now, so this slide talk about some opportunities and challenges to uh, project management from the the IoT technology. So uh, some of these I already talked. Uh, basically, availability of massive information and knowledge base, uh, which is always helpful for uh, you know project management. And then uh, so management of very advanced project within small collaborative commerce. Collaborative commerce means like you can have a small uh, you know organizations in any local community and then manage very advanced project within that local community because you can collaborate globally and get the knowledge and data you need to manage any project uh, uh, and that is through the IoT and uh, uh, of course easy and real-time communication around the world just like we are doing right now and then uh, challenges um, uh, of course there are a lot of new tools uh, to learn so right now uh, the project management managers uh, they have inadequate inadequate skills uh, uh, to handle these technologies. So th there's a lot to learn, of course. And also, uh, uh, you know, since it is all uh, you know connected, there will you know, increase number of stakeholders uh, uh, when you manage any project. Uh, project, even though you are you'll be managing a project, uh, a small project in uh, in a local community, still there may be other people watching, and then they will be giving feedback and uh, sometimes complaints. So, uh, so you have to manage that uh, that uh, that uh, the larger set of stakeholders uh, for any project, um, and uh, and of course, them you know it may impose uh, language difficulties when you communicate around the world, um, and then uh, also uh, you know when you have uh, high technologies, always people's expectations are high. So uh, managing the expectations is also a very uh, challenging task uh, for any project. So, uh, so you know when you have all the uh, it's ending now, uh, and then uh, you can start from next slide uh, when yes. you start. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Good. I'll disconnect you now. I mean, automatically disconnecting. Yeah. I'll I'll join you. Okay.